C Sharp is a living language. It has been changed a lot since its first release, version 1. And meanwhile, we have arrived at C Sharp version 6. And that version introduces a couple of new features that are really worth further investigation. These features will help you to simplify your code, make work for you a bit more convenient. All in all, it's nothing major, but it's these little things that make our lives easier. My name is René, I'm an instructor at Xamarin University, and I'm going to show you these c -sharp 6 features here today in this little recording. Let's quickly go through the list of new things. Using static members will help us to reduce the amount of code that we have to write. String interpolation will simplify the situations where we use string.format. If you have ever tried to initialize a dictionary with some values, then you will appreciate index initializers. If your app has a lot of small entity objects, then getter-only auto properties will simplify the initialization of those. We often end up with small classes that have really short methods. Essentially, these are one-liners. These can be simplified by using expression-bodied members. From previous versions of C-sharp, we already know the question mark question mark operator. Now we have null conditional operators, and we will see how we can use them to easily invoke event handlers, for instance. Up to now, catching exceptions with previous versions of C-sharp can be a bit tedious. Exception filters will be a great improvement here. And we can finally use async operation in catch blocks. If we want to output the name of the current method or property that we are in, we can use the name of operator in C Sharp 6. I have written a small application where we can see all of these features in action. So it's not only try theory that we're going to see here. Let me show you the application first. The app you see here kind of simulates an ATM where people can withdraw money. And the Xamarin Forms application that is running here is nothing but a terminal that is used to visualize what's going on. If you want, you can think of it as a receipt printer. So people withdraw money from their accounts in different currencies. So you see, for instance, here, 835 pound were withdrawn. This is converted into US dollar and we can see the account number it was withdrawn from and every transaction gets a timestamp. And this happens in the background. You can also see it here in the output window that sometimes a connection failed here. So this is of course all simulated and uh, exceptions are thrown that we can recover from. And whenever a transaction completes, it's outputted here. Now let's have a look at the code. So here we are in Xamarin Studio. And um, well, let me quickly walk you through that app here. So we have the solution with one, two, three, four projects. Uh, we got an iOS project, we got an Android project, and we got the Forms project up here. And uh, I'm not going to cover those. The important things are here inside this portable class library that is referenced by the Forms app and by the native projects. So this contains all the logic. And as it is now, it's pure C Sharp 5 compatible code. So let me quickly show you the classes. We have a receipt entity here. And uh, I'll make that smaller here. So we have that receipt entity just uh, simple object with a couple of immutable properties that get assigned when the receipt is created, like the account number, the money was withdrawn from, the amount, the currency that was used, and the timestamp to uniquely identify that. So you also see how that's implemented. We have getters and private setters here in our properties. We also have computed properties here that have getters only, where, for instance, here we can convert everything to US dollars. Um, so stuff like that. And we have here our account. And uh, again, an account has an account number. It's got an initial uh, balance and it's got a currency that it's uh, based on. And we got an async method here where you can withdraw money. And uh, what that does is, so I, I made that up um, in my scenario, 
if you want to withdraw money, the transaction has to first has to be approved, and uh, for that I use a, a transaction manager, and that can throw an exception, and uh, we catch that exception here. And depending on the exception type, we can either retry or we're gonna rethrow that exception. So here we retry, and uh, then we create a receipt. And we have uh, a custom exception that is used here. I got special event arguments that uh, that I use because I provide an event that is triggered whenever money has been withdrawn. So um, the Xamarin Forms app uses that to subscribe to these withdrawals and it's get past these event arcs here. Currencies, well that's simple uh, enumeration of supported currencies that we have here. Then exchange rates is a static helper class that contains well a table of exchange rates so from euro to US dollar from yen to dollars and uh, from pound and that's got a helper method where we simply multiply the amount with the exchange rate from that table and all that is started from the ATM main class here it has a singleton where you can get the one and only instance of the ATM and then you got a run method here. You can think of that as you know, well, kind of booting up the machine, initializing it. And it's nothing but an endless loop. It gets a random account and it simulates that money is withdrawn from these accounts. So uh, it generates a, a random amount here. The withdraw method, this async method is called on the account. And uh, if you remember that this can fail there's one type of exception that we catch internally where we can retry, but if it's a severe error, then uh, it's going to fail and we cannot complete this. We cannot complete this uh, this operation. Uh, we got some debug outputs here, and here is where we have this code that triggers the event that the forms application subscribes to. Now, uh, maybe a quick look at the transaction manager. What is that about? So this approved transaction async, that simulates network activity. So maybe if you want to withdraw money, you entered your PIN and the bank has to approve that it's the valid PIN or whatever. And um, so this takes a while, it can fail. And uh, we have different errors here, one that we can recover from, like the connection was a bit flaky or we have a severe problem like the customer validation has failed and um, one out of ten times you see I'm using a randomizer here one out of ten times it fails completely and five out of ten times um, the connection is broken and uh, then we got a retry so that just simulates some operation in case the operation is uh, the the connection is flaky uh, we have this retry approval async method here that the client is supposed to call uh, that's the little story I made up here and uh, you have already seen it in action. Now like I said this is all plain C Sharp 5 and now I'm going to walk you through the new features that C Sharp 6 gives us and uh, for each of these features we want to see where we can apply it here in that code. The first feature that I want to discuss is using static members and I'm going to switch right over to Xamarin Studio to show you what that is and how we can use it. The first thing that is maybe interesting, do I have to enable C Sharp 6 features? Um, yes, you kind of have to under some circumstances. And it's pretty easy. So you go to the project options of any C Sharp project and uh, you go to build general tab and here you find the C sharp tab and down here you find the C sharp language version that is used if that points to default and you're using the latest and greatest Xamarin Studio version or you're using Visual Studio 2015 that means it's gonna support C sharp 6. Uh, you can also manually select it here if you want to but we're gonna leave it to default here as this means C sharp 6. Alright so um, using static members that was the first thing that I wanted to show you I don't know how many times have you written lines or code like this debug.write line console.write line so you using a static method from some static class wouldn't it be nice if we were able to write just write line here instead 
So wherever we find these debug right line, we want to use right line only. And this is possible with C sharp 6. All we have to do is, is to add a little using up here. So you see we're already using system di diagnostics. That's where this right line came from. That was system.diagnostics.debug.writeline. Now what we can do is we can say using static system.diagnostics dot debug and if I build that now the build is successful and this right line is now debug dot right line you can see that this is still red here the problem is that Xamarin Studio the IDE does not correctly pick that up it does not recognize this new feature yet in all cases but that's gonna be fixed soon so now we're just using right line here instead of debug right line saves us a couple of characters that we don't need to type anymore but another ad advantage of this really is maybe later I wanna I no longer want to use debug right line I want to use console right line maybe I move that code from a PCL into some uh, platform specific project well all I have to do is instead of using system diagnostics debug I say using uh, system.io.console up there and then the right lines will come from this other static class instead so that was using static members small feature pretty useful i'd say the next thing we're going to inspect is called string interpolation string interpolation helps us to simplify that code where we have used string.format in the past and worked with these placeholders so again i'm switching over to the code and here we are inside the receipt class that you've seen before and the display string property that is what the UI binds to so this is what you see when the app runs this is the output and it's using string.format to output let me put that in a new line here so to output the amount that was withdrawn the currency symbol the amount converted to dollars and so on and it's pretty easy to see that this is not very readable so you have all these curly braces here with the placeholders and if back here you switch like this around so you put currency first and amount there it will still work but it doesn't make sense anymore so now where the currency should show up suddenly the amount is shown so this is not very obvious so let me undo that here and instead we want to use string interpolation here so I'm gonna comment that here out and um, let me copy this here like this change that we got to add a dollar sign here to indicate that we want to use string interpolation and instead of putting these placeholders here we can now directly use the values the properties that we want to output so here we can say this dot currency this dot sorry that was this dot amount currency this dot amount US dollar from and we pass the account number here and the last thing we output is the time span and uh, let's try so that throws an error here let me see what the problem is Oh, looks like I got a typo in here. Want account number. Is that better? One error. Time span? Is it not time span? Oh, it's time span with a lowercase s. Sorry, it's time stamp. Getting there this dot time stamp that's it so if we build that we wait until it runs so you see the the output uh, works that's what's called string interpolation whenever we use string.format simplifies our lives 
And we'll move on with something that's really cool and one of the features that I love most and that's called index initializers. Here we are in the exchange rates class and the exchange rates class has got a dictionary here that maps from a currency symbol to a float value that is the exchange rate from that currency to US dollar. And in order to initialize that dictionary you gotta write code that looks something like this. So you up the dictionary and then you call add 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 and you add all the values that you want to have in there. So instead of this, what you can do with C sharp six is using index initializers. So um, let's first get rid of these parentheses here. And uh, we add the curly brace here. And now the syntax is as follows. The key goes into square brackets and the value is assigned using an equal sign. So what we want to do is we want to map from the currency here to a factor, so it's square brackets, currency symbol US dollar, and uh, that's 1F. And now let me copy these. We need for Euro, Yen, and Pound. And uh, I'm gonna update these here. Euro symbol dot Yen GBP. And uh, I also gotta copy the values here. 1.08 that is zero point that and that's 1.522 and so on. And then we can get rid of this here. Now that looks a lot cleaner I think and uh, it's pretty obvious what you're trying to do here. You have these nice mappings from the key to the value and of course if I build that that builds and works and that feature is called index initializers. And we're moving on to what's called getter only auto properties. That sounds pretty sophisticated and uh, we want to see what this is about. So I'm switching over to Xamarin Studio and we are in our receipt class here in, in that little app. And the receipt class has got a couple of properties like the account number, the amount that was withdrawn, the currency, and a timestamp. And all of these values, they are initialized once, and some of them, like the timestamp here, that cannot be changed at all. That's completely immutable. So if we look at these here, we have all these um, getters here and private setters. We have the private set here, even though we never set it again. So we set it once and that's it. What you can do now with C sharp six is you can get rid of this here. So you can get rid of that one here. You can get rid of this one. We can get rid of that one. So like that. And what we can also do is we have our timestamp here. We can get rid of this one. And since this is completely immutable. We can also initialize it right here. So we can say date time dot now. Just say equals date time now. And we can get rid of this here. Something like this. And this should also still build. So they are still automatic. We still got a backing field there, which is hidden from us we don't need to use these private setters anymore and we can directly initialize them as shown here. Again, it reduces the amount of code that we write and uh, it also saves us from maybe accidentally overwriting these values. So if I go now, let's say I go here into the display string and I want to say this dot amount equals I don't know one two three four and I built that it says it's read only it cannot be assigned to whereas if I had a a private set method that would be possible so it also reduces chances for errors here these are called getter only auto properties 
Up next, we have something for every fan of Lambda expressions, and that's called expression bodied members. Here we have a typical computed property, the display string. We already refactored that to use string interpolation and uh, directly put our data here instead of using the placeholders. And if you look at this method, what is it really doing? We only want to return this string.format result here. In order to do that, we have to write that return statement here, the get and two curly braces and another pair of curly braces here. But the actual action is really just this string format. And if we use events these days, we often use anonymous delegates or we use Lambda expressions. So wouldn't it be awesome if there was a way to use these Lambda expressions here with properties? And you can do that now. So we can refactor this method here by, let me copy that here. So I'm going to copy this string.format here. And I get rid of everything here. I remove the whole body. And I say display string. And I use the arrow operator, basically saying display string becomes string.format. And then we use the string interpolation to nicely output that can run that, that builds. So let me bring up the app. I'm gonna rotate that landscape. So you see it still outputs correctly here the formatted string. Now again this is not a really major change here. It just saves us from typing this uh, this boilerplate code that really does nothing. And I think it's pretty clear. That is what display string becomes. But let's have another example. I move over to the exchange rates class. That was the static class that converted from one currency into another. And here we have a method that is essentially a one-liner. So all it does is it returns amount times the exchange factor. And again, we can simplify that, make it clearer, make it more readable by using expression um, bodied members. So we simply go here, we get rid of the curly brace, we get rid of the return statement, and we get rid of this curly brace, and we do it like that. So you see this also applies to methods, not only to properties, and uh, builds just as fine. And uh, that was expression bodied members reduces the amount of code we write. The next topic is called null conditional operators. It is also referred to as the Elvis operator. You'll see why. Here we have a typical example and we see that in many many applications. This is in our ATM simulation where we trigger the event that gets called whenever a transaction has been completed. Now let's go through this. Cash withdrawn, that's the event that we have here in our class. See it's up here, that's the event. And what we do here, we assign that to a local variable, to a temp variable. Then we check if that is not null and if it is not null we invoke it. You should always do that because it's possible that if you check here directly the event and then you invoke it, it could be that the event gets unsubscribed right here in between and then you'll end up with a with a null ref exception. So you don't want that. That's why we have this construct here if we want to invoke an event. Now again, that's pretty much code if all we effectively want to do is is invoke the event. So we can do better with C sharp 6. We can use the null conditional operator which looks like that and uh, that's why it's referred to as the Elvis operator. So you, you kind of see his hair and uh, the eye still looking at you. Um, but yeah, so Elvis operator, null conditional operator. But what can we do with it? Well, what we can do, for example, we can use our event here, cache withdrawn. And we say, if that is not null, then call invoke. Well, let me copy that. I don't need to type that. 
sorry there and then we get rid of this here so what we do here is if cache withdrawn is not null then invoke the invent now not only is it shorter it is also good for those of us who are maybe too lazy to assign this event to a temp variable and maybe simply forget so if you do it like that in the f in the future then we'll be taking care of for you it will be invoked if it's not null and uh, otherwise it does nothing the nice thing is you can also use this nested so uh, another typical example that you will often see in apps these days is where we we maybe receive some I don't know some JSON object and um, so let me quickly let me quickly simulate that so we have some some JSON object that maybe is returned from JSON.net and you often see things like this if JSON is not zero and uh, JSON dot uh, some array is not null and JSON dot sum array index zero is not null um, then do something with it and you can rewrite that now by using something like um, JSON dot sum array dot zero whatever so this will work in C sharp 6 and it saves you from doing all these weird condition checkings there null conditional operators really useful extension to the language exception filters help us with C sharp 6 to define or to figure out if we want to process or catch an exception or just let it move on and uh, let it let it be caught by somebody else here's what that looks like here we are inside the transaction manager uh, remember the transaction manager that's simulating the network activity that's what's communicating with the bank and potentially something can go can go wrong here in case something goes wrong an approval exception is thrown here that approval exception has got um, an issue property and the issue can either be customer validation failed which is a very severe problem so this is nothing that our our withdrawal can recover from or it can be something not fatal like there's a problem with the connection so if the connection has got a problem then the client is supposed to retry by calling this retry approval async method and uh, so the client can handle that so let's see where we use that method approve transaction async that is used here in the account class if we withdraw money so here you see the try catch block it's trying to approve this transaction and it's catching here the approval exception that is thrown in the catch block what we do is we check what is the real issue so here we say is it the connection that failed if that is true then we are supposed to call this retry approval async now we have a problem because this is an async method and here we are inside a catch block with C sharp 5 you cannot execute async methods inside the catch block so in order to work around this I have introduced a bool value here that is false by default you see it's up here and if we see that the issue is connection failed we set our must retry to true and uh, then down here outside the catch block we check if that was set and we do this retry approval async call if the problem that we encounter here in this exception is something fatal for us then we can't handle it then we throw that exception again we rethrow 
in this case it's the ATM itself in here in its loop that catches this exception and it says sorry fatal exception has occurred I cannot complete the transaction no receipt will be generated so let me go back here so basically what we're doing here we're saying we are only interested in that exception if it is of type if the issue's connection failed that's all we want so let's rewrite that here what we do here is we're using the new when keyword and here we can say we want to catch that exception when approval exception dot issue equals and I'm going to copy that here this issue still missing parentheses here now what we tell here is only if the issue is connection failed enter the catch block in all other cases let it pass now this helps us to simplify the code in here so here we're using a debug right line you remember we can simplify that by using the static class here we don't need the we don't need the must retry here anymore and we do not need the else branch that rethrows the exception anymore because it won't be caught so there's no need to retry so we remove this one here we remove the bool value here now our code is already much much shorter and another nice thing that I have not mentioned so far is that we can now execute async code inside the catch block so I can grab this here and place it in here so now we have our async method call inside the catch block this is just the IDE that doesn't recognize that yet and um, well that's that's really simplified and if the exception is fatal then it will still be caught in here by the ATM loop let me see if that builds yeah we're missing that using statement there I want to use static debug and that builds and again the proof that it works here it is you see it still outputs information and from time to time you should see down here that it says caught recoverable exception in draw money and uh, sometimes there's a fatal exception that will show the complete correct stack trace so that's also another advantage now because we don't rethrow this exception we really get the stack trace from where this exception originated so this helps us in case something goes wrong it's easier to debug that so these were the exception filters and we have also seen that we can now use asynchronous methods inside the catch blocks so that's another great enhancement of the language something that has not been possible before now the last thing that I'm going to show you is the new name of operator maybe you have already spotted that I'm going to switch over here to Xamarin Studio let me stop that here so we are again or still inside the withdraw method here and in case we catch a recoverable exception here we have this debug output saying caught recoverable exception in draw money now obviously somebody has refactored that code so it seems like that method was originally called draw money and now it has been renamed to withdraw and that's a typical problem that you see very often if somebody refactors something and you don't have tools like resharper installed they the refactoring does not detect if you use a method name as a string somewhere the name of operator is something that can help us here so let's change that first we use string interpolation you know that already and in here we use the curly braces and now we use the name of operator and here we simply say we want the name of 
withdraw. Now whenever that runs, it's going to output withdraw. So let's run that. And you can use that with properties, with method names. So we must look down here at the output. Now you see it. Let's stop that. Caught recoverable exception in withdraw. That is the name of operator. Little new operator but also I'd say very very useful. And that's it with the new features in C Sharp 6. I hope you enjoyed that and you will make use of these new features in the great applications that you build. Thank you for watching.